Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. We are, at least I feel, in the home stretch of getting this machine back together and working again. Well, let's just jump right into it. There's a few more things I need to button up here on the feed distribution unit before I can install it back into the knee. And not the least of which is to make sure that the shafts that the feed detent plungers right in are smooth and clear. This was the one thing that I knew was wrong with this machine and that was the saddle power feed uh, handle wouldn't move. And the reason why it wasn't was again because of excessive use of water-based coolant. The plunger had actually rusted into the shaft and it wasn't moving. So I'm just using a piece of, uh, I believe this was 220 grit emery cloth on the end of a shaft on my die grinder to clear out the shaft, make sure it's good and smooth so I know that the plunger will ride up and, and down in here with without any resistance. So we'll get the offending plunger installed back up in here. You can see here as I insert the plunger from below where it fits into a notch on a detent that is uh, linked to the shaft for the um, Y-axis power feed, the saddle power feed. Now I can insert the spring into the bottom of the plunger. I just need to install this plug then to hold that spring and plunger up inside there. This is turning out to be pretty difficult because I can't seem to keep this screw plug straight. And of course, this screwdriver really isn't the right tool to install this thing. It has a tendency to teeter a little bit, and then it gets off from the threads, and then it won't start. I remembered that when I got this plug out, I had made this tool not really a tool, it's just a piece of flat bar that seemed to fit in the slot of the plug. So I'm thinking I can use it to reinsert it. It should go a little easier than just a regular old screwdriver. Pretty sure I cleared out these threads before, but just to be sure, I'll go ahead and run a wire wheel over it. The last thing I want to do is go spend $75 on a tap just to clear these threads one time. Well, the combination between cleaning those threads and using this tool uh, certainly helped do the job. I finally got it started. It is a bit of a tight 
fit. So I'll use a, a wrench on here to help me tighten up this plug. I'll repeat all of this for the plunger that uh, is the detent for the knee power feed. Hopefully this will go a little bit smoother. We can go ahead now and get the Z and the Y axis uh, graduated dials back onto the front of the feed distribution unit. The dial on the right is for the Y axis and this has a 250 thousandths graduated dial. Before I inserted the set screw I dropped in a little sliver of a brass rod to help the um, set screw from raising a burr when I tighten it down. The one here on the left is for the z-axis, the knee, and it is a 125 thousandths graduated dial. I didn't have a set screw, the right thread for the z-axis here, so I'm just going to use this socketed cap screw until I can get it replaced. Uh, to make this next uh, operation a little bit easier, I'm going to tilt the feed unit onto its side so I can get to the taper pin holes for the saddle power feed lever. The taper pins that hold the lever onto the shaft have been re-drilled at least once. So I had to figure out which of these levers was correct for left and right. And once I figured it out, I made sure I marked it with a Sharpie. The original taper pins that I had removed from these were pretty badly beat up. And one of them was actually too short. So I ended up buying a couple of new taper pins from the local Ace Hardware. I can only assume that the pins that were in here were some were some oddball size because none of the number three, number two, number four taper pins I found would actually fit without some some help. So uh, luckily I do have a number three tapered reamer here that I can use to get this uh, hole reamed out so that the pin will fit. Well, I grew weary of trying to ream this hole by hand, so I chucked it up into a drill driver. These are high-speed reamers, so this is perfectly acceptable, and this certainly made a little more short order of getting this hole reamed out. Oh, that's a perfect fit. Uh, it's a touch long, but that's okay. I don't even think I'm going to bother grinding them down. I might, but I doubt it. 
Well, not quite the same procedure for the knee power feed lever here. I opted to drill out the hole to the smaller size of the, of the taper pin. So the process of reaming this hole out to size should go a lot faster. That should do it for this pin. Again, it's a little bit long but that doesn't bother me any. I'll give these a little bit of a dry run to make sure that those plunger detents are working correctly. I do have to finagle the input shaft a little bit in order for the teeth on the gears to always line up. But for the knee here, this looks like it's going back and forth just fine. And the same thing here with the saddle power feed. If I rotate that input shaft just a little bit to get the gears to line up, then I can uh, move the lever left and right. And when it's either left or right, you can see the lead screw rotating either clockwise or counterclockwise. So everything's looking good here. Well, now we can go ahead and install these operator handles. Um, these are not really complicated pieces, but there's a few parts. There's the clutch right here that fits into a hole in the lever, um, the crank, and there's a threaded hole that lines up with the hole in that clutch. And inside there we put a ball bearing, and on top of the ball bearing goes a spring and then that spring is held in with this hollow bolt uh, and this is for the detents you can see the groove detents in the shaft here so we'll start by inserting the clutch and then on the end of the shaft is a big washer and I'm using just a um, circlip uh, this is not how it was originally manufactured, but this is how it came to me, and it seemed to be working good enough, so I'm sort of leaving well enough alone. This is what keeps the handle on the machine so you can't pull it off. And next now is the actual crank handle itself. Now I have to line up those two holes, the threaded hole in the crank handle and the uh, board hole in that clutch. So that hollow screw that I showed you before is what captures the Z-crank uh, handle onto the clutch and there's not a lot of um, wiggle room there. They Those holes need to be lined up fairly perfect. Do a quick test fit with the bolt just to make sure it's lined up before I assemble the whole piece. We'll take that hollow screw and we'll drop a spring inside of it and balance a ball bearing up on there and then screw it back in from underneath. And with that tight now, I can feel as I pull the lever in and out that the ball bearing is falling into that detent. When I push it all the way forward, it's for manual operation, and it also locks out the power feed, so I can't have the handle engaged when the power feed's engaged. Uh, I can put it in a center section to where I won't be able to knock it and move it, but also the power feed can't uh, be tripped. And then if I pull it all the way out, it clears that lever so I can engage the power feed.
When I got the machine, even though the Y-axis wheel was present, the hand grip was missing. I really want something that will match the crank on the Z-axis. I found this one on Amazon. It was pretty cheap, but it does have a number of issues that I have with it, not the least of which is I would have to drill and tap that hole for the threads. It doesn't look anything like the original. Um, I hate the point on it. It All in all, it's just hideous. I did a bunch of research and somebody gave me the name of this company called Elko that sells uh, hand wheels and grips and I found one that's a little small but I think it will work perfectly for what I want. It does rotate, it is free rotating, it's not solid. The stud on it is a little bit small um, so I'll use a little Loctite here to mount it in the hand wheel but I'm going to be much happier with this. It at least looks a little bit like the original. The Y-axis hand wheel goes on um, in the same way that the Z-axis did with the clutch, the hand wheel itself, and then the ball bearing detent. Well, I think that's all I really have time for today. Um, I wanted to get a little bit more accomplished, but I had a heck of a time reaming those taper pin holes. So we're going to wrap this video up right here. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I do appreciate you taking the time to watch. I hope you enjoyed it. And that's it for this one. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.